Hey everyone, it's Ivan with KitBadger.com out here with my course loadout for my three-day urban rifle class at Thunder Ranch. We'll go ahead and start, I guess, clothing, layers, stuff like that. Every time I've gone to Thunder Ranch, who knows what's going to happen. I've been there, definitely not expecting snow, had snow, but then when it's really hot. So I pretty much brought everything. So I actually packed a couple of these right here, which are the... Prometheus Design Works, CC12 cargo container, 12 gallon, I guess. And so inside there's a 12 gallon tote and then basically this ruggedized bag, which is actually really handy. On the one hand, there's actual handles, straps, stuff like that, makes it easy to carry. And then I would actually take one of these out, have extra layers, stuff like that. Essentially set it on the range and when it would start snowing, or raining this thing would basically be covered up all my stuff would be dry if I need to pull stuff out pull it out whatever but as far as layers and stuff like that goes pretty much for all three days straight I was wearing these soft shell pants by beyond clothing they did a really good job one they're actually kind of brushed inside too which is nice keep you cozy and then base layers ended up wearing these guys these are the uh, merino base layers from tactical distributors pretty handy top and bottom i think i wore pretty sure i wore the bottoms like every single day i wore the top i think two of the days and then these are actually pretty cool kind of insulation layers this right here i believe it's the i don't know some sort of like latin or mythological name something or other from beyond like cellarus or something like that it's basically they're kind of level two it's almost like a waffle insulation layer quarter zip or half zip i guess up the front has a hood and you can put your thumbs through on the sleeves which is actually nice when you're layering up and i ended up wearing these pretty much every day i have this black one and also this green one right here, which is inside out. And yeah, they definitely were, it was a nice intermediate layer, didn't do a ton for wind, but on the one hand, like towards the end of the three days, it was actually pretty sunny. And more often than not, I would keep it on, even if I was starting to get warm, just to keep the sun off me so I didn't get sunburned, which worked. And then, Day one, I guess, was probably the coldest. Woke up to like three inches of snow. And I ended up wearing this, which is the Stratus Down Hoodie by Prometheus Design Works. It is waterproof. Also, it's down and yeah, nice and warm. So that was cool. And then that first day, I was like, man, how cold is it gonna be? So I ended up bringing this stuff, which is the level seven high loft from wild things gear and i think i may have thrown this top on for a minute one of the days but then most of the time or i guess day one rather i was actually wearing the high loft pants easy just goes on over the other pants and yeah kept me really warm also being able to basically I don't know, I feel like the core, like your chest, it's easier to keep warm with jackets and all these things, but once your extremities get cold, it is unpleasant. So between those high loft pants, and then on top of that, I was wearing some Solomon Tundra boots. Those things are amazing. They were pretty much too hot by the end of day one as it had warmed up. So after day one, I ended up switching out shoes, but pretty clutch for that first day. And then I think the last day, maybe second day, I don't know, all blends together. But one of those mornings, still pretty cold out. So I ended up wearing this, which is my Wild Things, is the Active Flex jacket, most expensive jacket ever. Reviewed it before, but this did a great job for me. Again, stopping any wind and plenty of movement as far as articulation and everything and with these other layers as far as these guys right here 
was able to basically layer this, 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 all those different things, and then basically shed layers as needed, which is really important and made it really easy to basically regulate temperature. This other container pretty much had all of the rest of my gear, protective equipment, different things like that. And I guess with respect to protective equipment, iPro, I've been wearing these for years. Smith Director Elite, prescription glasses. I don't know if Smith still makes ballistic prescription glasses or not. And honestly, I need to find something to replace these because they're pretty beat up, pretty scratched up at this point. But were those the whole time? As far as EarPro goes, these right here, OpsCore Amp, they're awesome. They're actually really, really nice. On the one hand, they're amplified hearing protection, so you can actually hear range commands, probably a good thing. You can hear Clint yelling at you. And then the other part too is gel cups, really comfortable. So when you're spending all day on the range, that's pretty clutch. And that amplified portion, there is definitely a fair amount of communication ideally between you and your partner during some different stuff whether it was like bounding things along those lines so yeah helped with the communication side of it and then most of the days most of the time i guess i was wearing these one kind of protect my hands and two just as kind of especially in the morning basically a contact glove because everything was cold in the mornings but these are the by skd tactical Basically, they're pig gloves, but these specific ones are from, or collaboration with, rather, Chuck Pressburg from Press Check Consulting. But really pleased with these. I've noticed some of the pig gloves in the past of recent time, some of the touch capacitive stuff hasn't worked super well. These actually work really well. And yeah, across the board, just pretty nice design. So ended up using those. As far as gear, so I did not wear this on day one. Reason being, it was pretty cold, and so I was wearing that uh, down jacket, and I was also knew it was cold, so I was gonna be wearing those level seven pants, the uh, high loft pants from Wild Banks. So I was like, I'm not gonna bother keeping anything on my belt line, and it's stuck. There we go. So for day one, I ended up actually running this right here. This is the Ammo Hub A1 by Full9, made by First Spear. And it can be used with pretty much anything, any type of harness. So I actually pulled these straps off of a an Obtanium gear, one of their, I think, Dank Robber Heavy, and clipped everything in because I, I was actually using this on a plate carrier, pulled it off, threw it on here, have the Spiritus 3 AR mag insert, pretty sweet patch from little spec monkey, my buddy over there. And this actually worked well. I actually used it every single day, all three days. That first day, we were really shooting just the second half of the day, but yeah, gave me plenty of ammo to work from. And the next days, I could either reload from that or from belt line, depending on what I was gonna do. And for the belt line, I was using this right here, which is the new core belt and two parts. So there's this inner belt right here, female Velcro on the outside, and this piece right here, where it basically adjusts. And then you have this belt, which obviously like PALS loops, so you can attach anything to it. And then pretty clever, uh, yeah, pretty clever adjustment up front. And so I ended up running this right here. I just had these two, I think they're the IAP immediate access pouch by MDOM, I believe. I actually really like these. They're, they get almost no love. Between different pouches, they're arguably maybe a little heavier, especially compared to like Healing Whisper or something, but great retention. Really easy to draw mags out and to shove mags back in, which is pretty nice, especially when you're bumping mags like from a like placard up front, like a chest rig down there. And then right here, this is, I think, SSE, something like that. 
basically it's a dump pouch from Blue Horse Gear. You can shove it up in here. Once I pulled this thing out, because I needed it the first time, I just left it out. Throw empty mags in there for going back to reload. And yeah, drop Ear Pro in there if I wasn't using it. And then lastly, med kit back here. Fortunately, did not have to use that. This one from Live the Creed. And then of course, as far as med goes, also had my RMT ratcheting medical tourniquet from VE development group, basically in my pocket, which when I had my giant warm pants, wasn't the most accessible, but otherwise pretty easy to get to. And then what else? Magazines, I guess. So at Thunder Ranch, you're shooting frangible. Like everything's frangible, except for when you take classes that are like more distance based. And so with that, everything was 5.56. Five, and in that was using these Gen 3 PMAGs windowed. And aside from those magazines, was also using these guys right here, which are SureFeed. Some with these magpul bases, and then some with the regular like USGI metal bases. The magazines honestly did really good. The ammo I was using was from Centerfire with an S, and it shoots pretty good. I will say it's a little bit on the underpowered side. And so I'll speak to that when I talk to the guns more, but with that, there were a couple occasions where didn't quite go far enough back to lock back. It only happened like once or twice, I think. And then also some failure to go totally in the battery, but I'll touch on that in a second. When we get in to guns. When it comes to guns, two is one, one is none. Always bring a spare. So to that end, I ended up bringing this guy right here which is the Perrin X16 by Tink Arms. And I ran into a little bit of an issue. So towards the end of day two, this thing ended up breaking off. I think this pin walked out and it basically self-destructed. And that was the end of that. Up to that point, actually ran really good as far as just like functioning and everything like that. Um, I was shooting this on here too. This can, it's the Mars can by b and Did a really good job, it sounds really good. Even though out of 14 people, only two of us had cans, bunch of savages. But one thing I will say is I shot this whole course aside from like some barricade stuff where the barricade was set up to shoot right-handed. So I shot right-handed, but other than that, basically shot this whole course left-handed. And I am right-handed and right-eye dominant. But I've kind of been dedicating this year to yeah, shooting another strong side. I will say going into it, I knew this was not the most ideal optic, and it was not. It is a TA-33, three by magnification, and doing up drills at like 15 yards, you bring it up and you see cardboard. And you're like, mm, I'm pretty sure that's my target. It definitely, it definitely was difficult, like way more difficult than just like a red dot or something like that. Especially like basically working that with non-dominant eye too. But it was good. I absolutely made it work. And yeah, overall this thing actually did a really good job for me. Right up to the point this thing busted. Then not so much. But since we only had a couple more drills like that day, I ended up actually shooting, I guess it was one of the Thunder Ranch guns made by Aero Precision, just a loner with a red dot. So they handed me that, got after it for those last couple drills. Then on that third day, busted out this little guy. 
I really like this gun. This is my Sugar Weasel by Q. It is actually serial number one, which is really cool. And it's gone through a bunch of kind of changes throughout the years. Most recently ended up adding this little shorty Honey Badger stock, got rid of the Law Tactical folder, stuff like that, lighting this thing up. And I ended up shooting this trash pan on it. And then this is my new, I think it's 12 and a half, 13 inch, 5.56 upper, cause ended up auctioning the other one for Sock F at the end of last year's Coast to Coast tour. And then Scalaworks Peak Iron Sights and this EOTech. And then of course, needed a sling. I ran this sling on both these guns, basically yanked it off there, threw some paracord on there, put it through that QD, and yeah, off I went. Oh yeah, and then Rev Firearms, or yeah, Rev Firearms, our Stoner Rifle Grip collaboration, and then Q's trigger in here too. This thing was like that, a lot of fun to shoot. This was absolutely way easier, basically having this EOTech. Just being able to bring it up and the brain's really good at figuring out like, oh, like let me overlap these images. When one is looking through lenses and magnified, not so much. I will say I ran into, both of these are tuned, like I've tuned them because they both have adjustable gas blocks, so why not? And they're also not like, hey, this is my end of the world gun. Like, I want it over gas so it'll work even when it's super disgusting and dirty. No, like they're tuned to be like really nice to shoot in part because my boys will shoot them too. So with that, that center fire ammo, definitely a little bit underpowered compared to like pretty much any of your military loads and stuff, which is usually what I end up shooting. And something I did end up running into a little bit with this, and I think it was a combination of one, that ammo being a little bit underpowered, and I think possibly the lube I was using, it was cherry balm, I think, something like that. And I also did not clean this. I pretty much lubed it once and ran with it. And occasionally, more towards the end of the day, I felt like it would go to cycle and it would do that right there ever so slightly out of battery if you go up there clicked into battery and so that would happen again i think combination of the ammo how i had the gas tuned in addition to it just getting really dirty and so it'd be ever so slightly out of battery hammer would fall obviously since it wasn't fully in battery wasn't hitting hard enough so got a bunch of free reps on clearing malfunctions but Honestly, it did really good. I, I really enjoy shooting it. And I guess if I take this gun back there, I'll probably just give it a little more gas and probably just make sure it's wet, shoot it wet all day long. But yeah, overall, definitely pretty pleased, aside from that stock issue with both these guns for me. Overall, I think all my gear actually did really good for this course. I don't know that there's anything I would really want to change. If you are going to Urban Rifle, there's definitely some things that are nice. One, depending on how agile you are and just in general, how beat up you are, knee pads, probably a good thing, especially working different positional shooting on gravel. I actually had a pair of Arc'teryx kneecaps. I never put them on. I don't know why. Probably should have worn them. Would save my knees a little bit, but wasn't really a big deal. Other things, one, if you have a suppressor, I would definitely bring it. A couple of things. On the one hand, like you're not a jerk to the people next to you online. And then communication piece, both suppressors as well as amplified hearing protection. Part of Urban Rifle is like shoot, move, communicate. And when you're shooting and trying to communicate, and you have a muzzle brake on your gun and you don't have amplified hearing, like, good luck with that one. Like, set yourself up for success. And yeah, I would encourage you just not have a muzzle brake. No need for it. Most certainly no need for it there at Urban Rifle. But suppressors, amplified hearing protection, pretty nice. As far as 
other kind of gear and yeah, mag pouches, plate carriers, whatever. That class is a really good opportunity to just kind of flesh out some gear because you're doing a lot of stuff to include, uh, to include a lot of dynamic stuff and you'll figure out quickly like, hey, what works, what doesn't work. And depending on you and your fitness level, I would probably not wear a plate carrier. Like, I wouldn't. Now, if you're like in really good shape and not 30 pounds overweight and you want to wear a plate carrier, awesome, like do it. But if you're not in very good shape, like you're just adding weight and ultimately you, you're going to end up fatiguing. And once you start fatiguing, then you're not in a position to like absorb the information that you're there for. So to that end, it honestly, probably for most people, really beneficial to just have a belt set up, maybe two mags or like a chest rig or both if you really want. I did just so I didn't have to go back and forth for mags or have them in cargo pockets. But really you just need one or two pouches to basically feed from and work through. And that will basically set you up for pretty much all the different drills you end up doing, which again, going back to weight and fatigue and just carrying stuff that you do not need is a good thing. The less you're carrying, like the more you can just focus on the task at hand and get in some good reps. Overall though, definitely I can't see really any like shortcomings in any of the gear I brought. If it rained, I definitely had my raincoat from Prometheus Design Works. I did not have, I don't think a pair of rain pants, but fortunately it did not rain. Maybe it did a tiny bit, mainly just snow though and then ended up getting warm. So again, having those layers is definitely nice, being able to shed layers as needed and yeah, basically deal with whatever the weather was gonna be down there in Lakeview, Oregon. But yeah, rad time down there at that class. And if you have questions for me, happy to answer them. Over there on Patreon, we have active Discord and yeah, can answer all your questions over there. And over at Patreon, little as a dollar a month, by supporting me, help me go out, create more content for you. And you'll end up getting early access to videos as well as some exclusive stuff and yeah, pretty good community of people over there. But as always, thanks for joining us at kitbadger.com. Look forward to seeing you next time.